Hello and welcome to a video broadcast of Mr. Salvucci's POD class class notes. Today we're going to discuss the political compass and our first major project will deal with students finding out where they fall in the political spectrum. This election season we're not really going to talk so much about the specific candidates as we are the ideas that are being proposed by the various candidates. So, uh, I do have to apologize due to a tactical and technical error on my part. I had some students take notes, and one set of notes did not come out very well. Uh, the handwriting was not very clear, kind of garbled. So, I have one set of notes, but we are gonna, going to work off of um, a Prezi that I'm building based on a PowerPoint that uh, Mr. Brian Pascal so graciously loaned us to use. So, what we're going to do over the next several days is discuss with the students uh, the ideas of left and right in American government, liberal versus conservative, and focus on the terms being used in political discourse today. So we start with the political compass. As I zoom in and out um, here and practice that zooming on my computer, we're going to talk about an oversimplification of the process which basically is um, you know what is the political compass it's political persuade what is your political persuasion not how to persuade somebody but where do you fall in the political spectrum oversimplified we're gonna look at left versus right um, as I'm noticing here on my little you can see where the cursor is going there is no it's a unintentional for my political friends uh, left being larger than right. But overall, we want to find out where the students fit in in the political spectrum. So, what do we believe as Americans? We did some brainstorming in class. Americans have uh, many different ideas concerning the role of government. And citizens, pretty much anybody uh, we discussed in class, tend to organize themselves with like-minded people. Uh, it happens not just with politics, but it happens in social groups, who you sit with in class, who you sit with in lunch, things of that nature. Um, we talked about big government when we brainstormed ideas. Some of the ideas we came up with were uh, the federal, our federal government, what we have now with the safety net. Some of the kids said, you know, Russia or Soviet Union government was considered big government, where everybody's the same. Other ideas in the other classes. Um, that we came across, which what we have uh, right now, it's the main government of a large area. The government plays a large role in what goes on in society. These are some ideas that we brainstormed. And uh, some others range from a lot of people, uh, excessively large, spending lots of money, has many regulations, controls everyone everywhere. And in our society that does tend to be when we talk about big government uh, we use the term intrusive all-encompassing where government has a large say in what um, happens in people's lives a lot of money spent a lot of people are employed so we brainstorm some ideas as to what small government is and those ideas range from local or state government other ideas were more freedom less of a safety net um, again we had individuals with a uh, smaller role other ideas were not as developed third world countries, dictators or groups of dictators such as oligarchies and you know, less government employees, less regulations spending less money and those were some of the ideas that we came up with with small government when we discussed no government we discussed uh, the term anarchy and how it doesn't really function in the long run because out of the chaos someone will step in and try and take control of the situation therefore you have some form of government and you won't have true anarchy so those are some of the topics we discussed in class today um, we'll do some more brainstorming Monday when we come back we did give two truths. I gave two truths. Um, regardless of big government or small government, we do need some form of government. 
to function as a society. You just can't be an individual out on your own. If you're out in the woods by yourself, that's fine, but eventually you're going to run into people and you have to deal with them, and that's where the government steps in and helps the organization of society and settle differences, lay claim to land in the first place, set up some sort of infrastructure so goods and services can be moved around. In this day and age, you do need some form of government. We also talked about um, truth number two, which the terms big government and small government are subjective terms. Meaning, if you look at the government today and you can have one political party saying government is too large, it's too overbearing, it's too intrusive, you need to um, scale back. If other people look at the same government and say, no, everything looks good, we're not too big, we're not too small, it's kind of like the, the um, three bears, we're just right, the baby bear theory. And you have other people that look at government and say, you can say, you know, there's not enough government, we need more interaction, more of a safety net for the people, uh, more regulations. So government in, in its exact same form is considered too small by a different group of people. Um, it, it's, it's an opinion, it's a subjective term. So you can't really um, prove it right or wrong because it's an opinion. And you know, it's like hot and cold. If you give a specific temperature, a specific set of degrees, you can prove or disprove um, whether that temperature is correct. But hot and cold is an opinion. Big government, small government, they are opinions. Um, some advocates of certain aspects of big government want government to stay, not be as intrusive in personal lives. Some people don't want government interfering unless it's the ideas they want to project upon others. So this is a very um, convoluted term if you want to get into these big government and small government terms. Um, they're all subjective. There's no right or wrong. Everybody has an opinion and they're entitled to it. Now, with the live scribe notes, uh, what the students do is they write in a notebook with a special pen that has a camera on it, so the ink registers on the paper where the kids can see what they're writing. The camera picks up uh, these small pixelated dots on the paper that form kind of like a smart board grid and record what the students are writing. So here are the notes from today, um, the abbreviated version from one of my periods courtesy of Christina S. Uh, political persuasion, basically where do you fall on the political spectrum, left or right? The kids are going to go and they're going to try and beat their uh, preconceptions. C, by answering a series of questions, honestly, where do they fall um, on the political spectrum? Then goes over the notes of what the, uh, we believe, with the different ideas, organizing ourselves with people that seem similar. Um, you have big government, small government, no government. You have uh, the opinions, and we discussed all that previously in the notes. So this is what I'm going to be working with. Hopefully the pen and the people working with it will do a thorough job. Christina did a great job with this. Um, she was very much to the point. The conversation was a little bit different, so I combined all three classes. So we'll have the Prezi presentation along with uh, the notes from the PDF file which will be posted in the Edmodo classroom for the students to access for a review if they choose to review it. Uh, I hope that you found this discussion today useful, the, the recording of this discussion useful, and we'll do some more next week once we get some more class discussions going. Thank you.